We're definitely gonna take out the high voltage connector. All right, should be able to just wiggle this off. There we go. Come on down there. It's coming down. All right, slow down. I gotta get the stress off that connector. In order to take this, the CV shaft out, it almost looks like I'm going to have to take the bar links off. So I made a mistake early on here and should have removed the battery tray cover. By doing that would have made it a lot easier to remove the high voltage cable and coolant lines. Later on in the video, you'll see where the cables got hung up in the motor frame. You're definitely going to take out the high voltage connector. If I disconnect the brake caliber from the from the rotor, then it can just hang and I won't have to worry about disconnecting the brake line and draining that and having to bleed it, I mean. I can leave the other connector on there. But at the same time, once I take these four subframe bolts out, I can just drop everything down. So at that point, I'm just removing a coolant line and high voltage connector. It's not really all that much to disconnect. I'm pretty sure these other coolant lines are long enough because they go up and over. Right here I was looking to disconnect the coolant lines on the motor. One line hooks up above the heat exchanger. The other line is connected at the bottom near the high voltage connector. This line should be left on and removed from the battery tray connection. Let's go ahead and take these off. to get the caliper off well it's open so it's gonna be really easy looks like it's just the two bolts yep e18 tighten we need to loosen some more leverage. That's what I like about this ratchet. Boy. Yep. Oh, that locked me up though. Pick it up a little bit. Alright. And then pull that off. Alright, that's not bad. There we go. One well, might actually be a 15. And it is, okay. So that defeats that purpose. Let's go ahead and break these loose. I'm not gonna take them out, I'm just breaking them loose because we don't want shock to try to jump up or something. Jump, jump out. Just, just want it loose. Because if I'd have to, do that then the coolant is going to run from the front all the way back here whereas right now I have an advantage because I can drain just what's in this motor and there and everything else will stay in the car at least that's the idea and then I can just do a purge or a refill of it later damn things gonna come loose I don't want it to oh, there it come off now all right, has no choice but to open up. Usually I want to take them all the way off, but sometimes they give you trouble. All right, should be able to just wiggle this off. There we go. Okay. Well, that wasn't very eventful. All right, I got a e Torx 12 here. See if this fits. And that's it. Not E10, not E11, it's E12. I already had used it on the car, so fitting that it would be this one. Damn, that's first tight. I say it's hard to get to. Feels like it's got Loctite on it or something. All right. 
It's got that stupid little freaking bolt out. Okay, we need to take this high voltage connector off. Push the red tab up. Slide it all the way up. And you take the black tab. And you pry it up. It should unsnap. And unplug the cable. Wiggle it. Oh. Alright. High voltage disconnected. I need to put something over this. Though. I need to put some tape over the connector. Or something. Definitely don't need any contamination in either one of those ports. The well, next thing to do is disconnect these harnesses here. Where's that screwdriver? Alright, the screwdriver. Okay, so we take, pop this little tab, push it, and unplug it. Okay. deal with the harnesses. I get a shorter stroke here and I should be able to lift that up, put him right in the middle, right in the middle. Close. Oh man. I need, I need like a block of wood or something. I got two two by four blocks we'll put there. Okay, I think I'm in the middle. I got tension on it. Let me take the front two out. back in there and dig it out. Alright, and then gotta get Oh, apparently they stay in there. Alright, whatever. shut down anyway two out the back and hope this thing doesn't fall and break something <sighs> Oof. it's definitely free All lopsided. All right, let me see if I can lower it down now. Right, come on down there. It's coming down. All right, slow down. Not more coolant. Where the hell's that bucket? That's it. I don't know. She's coming down. All right, let me double check. Make sure there ain't nothing, no showstoppers, nothing hanging up under there. I mean, why would you do anything else, you know? Because if there's anything else, what's wrong with this thing? If there's anything else hanging on in there, then... Oh, ground. Yep, there is a ground right here. What is this? 10 mil, it is holding me up. Yeah, that's 
nothing crazy. A little thing. Is that attached to, or does that come out? Oh, it's a nut, all right. Is there one on the other side? All right, now let's see. What else we got in there? All right, there's a coolant line at the top. Um, we're pretty much open. Hung up on there. All right, so these rubber boots just sit on there, so that's not, that's not structural at all. Um, yeah, these are out the way. Those are down. Let me go check the other side. And I don't see a ground or anything over here. This is out the way. Um, like I say, the only thing is that coolant line, but it looks like as it goes down, that coolant line is gonna extend and I'll be able to disconnect it on top. Okay, let me go ahead and let her down some more. I'm just gonna watch this. Uh, Oops, not that fast. All right, I gotta check that harness over here. Make sure it's coming out that hole. It's hard to see. Get my hand back there. Uh, is it free? Yeah, it's free. Okay, it looks free. So I should be able to just drop it down and roll it out. From the looks of it. Getting some more cooling out of it. It's acting like it's trying to it's trying to lay over for some reason. Like something still got it in the front over here. Either that or it's back heavy. Yeah, there's nothing over here. Come on now, come on this way. They're like literally fixing to lay down on the damn thing. All right, let's see one thing's for sure. I can get these out the way. So those just sit in there. See, it's trying to come down. It's trying to lay down right here. But something is holding it in the front. Um, it's on a ledge. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I got it off the ledge. <laughs> now it's teetering that way. All right, I can let it completely down now. Kind of. Yeah, so those those dog legs were kind of up under there. Yeah, perfect, man. Perfect. All right, let me check. Well, I was going to check on those cables. Oh, man. Well, there goes the coolant. I didn't want to go all over the freaking floor. It's just teetering on the... Uh... Did it literally go inside the thing? Oh my god. I just got coolant in the freaking high voltage connector. Wait, is it bolted here too? I need to pick it up.
this 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 should no this shouldn't be attached here. Is that attached right there? I gotta get the stress off that connector. <sighs> all right, I gotta turn y'all off. I gotta get under there. So I got the rear drive unit all cleaned up. Now, in order to disassemble this thing, I'm looking at in order to take this the CV shaft out, it almost looks like I'm gonna have to take the bar links off and remove the suspension in order to pull it. I'm kinda thinking though, if I remove the drive unit and rotate it up, I should get enough slack. I can just disconnect the shafts that way. You almost should be able to do that because this is a lot of work. I mean, it's not that difficult, but it is a lot of work to remove all these uh, links from the spindle to remove the shaft. So I'm gonna try doing that first. And then if I can get some movement in it and I can pop those out, then I can just sit the drive unit over here out of the way and let those dangle. I can take the other one, drop it, you know, back in and plug them back in. No, that works. Oh, that's welded. Never mind. I don't, I don't have to hold that. Not to mention, these are some little bit thin plates holding that motor in. Just can't get in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's a lot easier. Alright, long extension can get it out of there. Now, it should be free. I mean, other than the shafts and where's that wiring harness? So, one of them, a very unique plug. Golly! Why do these connectors have to be just so damn aggravated? Oh, there it goes. I had to pull a little bit harder than I want to. Okay. Now, this is the same as the one under the back seat that comes off of here. Huh. Okay. And then the only other thing is this ground, which I guess I could just take it off like that. Um, Alright, so if I lift that up. Okay, there it goes. Alright, it's coming up. There we go. Oh, it's pretty heavy. Okay. Oop, went back in there anyway. Damn it. Can you fill back in that one again? All right. Quit being a weasel. Ah, ow. Okay. Looks like we're gonna get the slack I need. Yeah. Like I was talking about, it looks like it's definitely gonna get slack. Oh, there's the fluid coming out. Dead gummit, bad idea. Yeah, I did not do that. Yeah, future Casey here. Unfortunately, my GoPro died while I was taking the motor out of the subframe and I lost that footage. What ended up happening was I was able to remove the motor. Unfortunately, I didn't get to show y'all the aftermath, but that's going to be in part three. So stay tuned and you'll get to see everything when I release that video. Thanks for watching.